the Ned Foss Brave. <laughs> so the Ned Foss Brave it comes in your uh, typical Ned Foss box. There's your information right there. If you care, yes, it is made in China. Um, I pretty much the only thing that came in this box was the knife itself. Um, the knife came wrapped in plastic, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. What we have here is a pretty cool knife, actually. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but it's kind of grown on me a little bit. And it's kind of like because of the K-Bar, <laughs> I must say, inspired blade shape. You know, because I do like the K-Bar blade shape, even though I don't have a K-Bar. And the ZT inspired handle, if I may say. Now, I'm going to get this elephant out of the room because everybody said one of two things when I did a short on this. That it is a copy of a ZT or it is a copy of the USMC K-Bar knife. Um, it looks similar, but here is the real ZT. I mean, there's obvious handle differences. Yeah, it was inspired by, but I mean, nothing is interchangeable on here. It, it is what it is. Um, the blade shape on this definitely resembles a USMC uh, K-Bar like fighting knife, you know, with the fuller here and the, the clip point and the blah, 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 you know? So it's kind of like a combination of the best of both. I don't know, but it is a pretty decent knife actually. Um, Ned Foss did send this to me. I was kind of hesitant. <laughs> They're probably never send me anything again. Um, because I was kind of curious about this knife because I do have a, the ZT and I have the ZT clone. And then now this guy, this is a, let's get some specs out of the way here. This knife has a six and three quarter inch blades. I think the K bar USMC is seven. I correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we got six and three quarters of blade. And the handle is much larger than the ZT. You know, we're at uh, four and seven eighths on this thing with a total length of 11 and three quarters. I'm just pulling these. So, I mean, I don't know what the what the uh, charts say. Um, look at about an inch and an eighth height here. Same all the way down the blade. And for cutting edge, right about six and a half inches. And blade thickness, a solid three sixteenths. It's, it's a pretty chunky knife, actually. What I did like about this was a couple things. This and the clone both have hollowed out uh, sections underneath the scales, which I'm not a huge fan of. This actually is a solid piece of uh, D2 steel, which I haven't got into yet, all the way through. Um, no, no cutouts. The only holes in here are the two holes for the, uh, the pins or the screws and, you know, a little cutout for the, uh, for the butt plate to get screwed on here. Um, I have already pulled this part and checked it. It did come with, I don't know, some kind of Loctite or something on there. But uh, I feel this handle will stay secured much better than, not the original, because the original is done right, but the, let's say the ZT clone, the the Amazon special. <laughs> but uh, balance wise, it does kind of put it just kind of back a little bit. It's, it's it. I don't know if it's gonna chop, we're gonna try that. There is no place for a lanyard hole in this thing. I, that's one knock on the ZT is I'm not a huge lanyard fan, but I would like the option. They don't give you the option here. But then again, it's not a chopping knife. This is a much larger knife. Well, not much larger, but it is larger. And it, you know, it, it does feel like it wants to chop a little bit. Um, ZT uses CPM 3V. This is D2. I've done many discussions about D2. I like D2 when done right. Um, a lot of people in the comments of the shorts on this thing said it's, it looks great until you hit it against something and it shatters. I've already batoned it and uh, I, I do not see that being the case. We have a uh, full flat, or not a full flat grind, we have a, like a, like a semi-high saber grind. It's a flat ground saber grind. Um, the grinds on here are actually fantastic. The fullers are perfect. I mean, it's done freaking nice. Um, yeah, there's no other way around it. It's got a decent thickness tip on there. Uh, grinds pretty decent on there. Not perfect, but pretty close actually. Um, yeah, so she did come razor sharp out of the box. It is still razor sharp. I've used it in shorts and uh, 
done some things with it. I haven't even touched up the edge. It is still not focusing, but it's still dirty, you know? So, I mean, <clears throat> D2, as I've said before, when done right, against popular belief is actually a really decent steel. You know, before all these CPM steels and all this stuff came out and everybody went crazy, um, D2 was the super steel of the day. Like, I mean, Buck used D2, Benchmade used D2, uh, K-Bar used D2, all these companies used D2 and you, you used to love it. And now for some reason, because of uh, cheap Chinese crap companies that, you know, don't do their heat treatment process or don't even heat treat or overheat treat or God knows what they do, or if it's even real D2, um, has ruined it for popular opinion, in my opinion. Um, it's enough about that. It's got a decent sheath, actually done better, in my opinion, than the, uh, than the ZT. It has a decent click in there. It's not going anywhere. There's no rattle. Not even down here. The only thing you're hearing is the damn buttons. It's got a little secondary... Uh, retention little leather loop i like how they attached it i don't know if this is real leather it smells like real leather but <laughs> they could have just infused some smell in there i'm not sure um overall I, I like the sheath i really do i am a big fan of kydex and uh it seems to be done well holds the knife it doesn't have like a real very good click but i mean it clicks in it clicks in way better than the uh the $300 ZT did, so good on them for this. Let's go outside and check it out. It's super ass windy, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Fucking falls ass windy today. It's supposed to be up to 60 miles an hour winds. All right, so I got three different levels of Batani. We have cedar, we're gonna pound it through that knot. We have some uh, murder oak wood that's just super hard. <laughs> you hear it drop. And then this dried out piece of God knows what that uh, is a lot of knots. So we're gonna try that out too. It's got dirt on it. It's gonna be an interesting, interesting test. I know everybody loves batoni. So first off, there's the knot. Let's see what happens. I mean, it's cedar, but right through the knot, stupid cameras moving around. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see, especially with the thickness of this D2, I don't see that being an issue at all. How about this murder wood? Let's not even do it the nice way like this. Let's go this way and see how, uh, see how it holds up. Very, very hard wood. I don't know what this crap is, but Jesus, it's gnarly. And the knife is just fine. <laughs> now let's do this little turn. Uh, we could go that way, but let's let's go like right there make it interesting cut through a knot see if this weak d2 can handle this i don't even know if i can baton through this to be honest with you I had to hit that pretty damn hard. Let's go right, right here. Now I know people hate batoning, but you know, what you do with your own knives is your own damn business. You watch and hate me do it because you don't want to do it with your own knives. I get it. So why complain about me doing it when you can watch me do it and give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of confidence in a product that you're too scared to use. So what about us backyard bushcrafters? 
can we get some curls on this? You know, it doesn't have a finger choil, it has a guard, there's no jimping, it has everything that uh, <laughs> people hate when it comes to this. So let's just see, let's see how we, uh, how we do. Could we start a fire with this guy? Probably not today, it's too freaking windy. This does have a pretty thick factory grind. Um, a little thicker than I would like, but probably what makes it tough. Because, I mean, this is not a bushcrafting knife. Could you do bushcrafty stuff? Yes. We batoned. Now we're doing a feather stick. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say feather stick, but we're we're making we're making feathers. Does that count? Let's do some cross batoning. See how that works. I don't know why everybody is so scared of D2. I have honestly have never had a D2 knife fail me. I'm gonna beat it through this with this hammer. Uh, yeah. still gonna complain. You shouldn't hit a knife with a hammer. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> this is a piece of the murder wood. I don't even know if we can do this. But we're gonna try right there. Does that look good? Looks good to me. Now, if D2 is so fragile, oh my God, it's D2, it's gonna break when you look at it. Uh, I don't think so, I don't think so. Let's do something else. So this is probably more of a fighting knife design. I mean, it's kind of got that K-bar blade shape. Um, let's try penetration. Uh, people poo-poo on stepping sidewalls, you know, if you don't have a good tip, you're still not gonna make it through this sidewall. They're like, oh, I could put a screwdriver with it. Yeah, yeah, because you're putting a tiny little section through. Try to put a blade through it, much different. Oh, and do it without air in there. That makes it so much more fun. <laughs> Good. Went through just, just right. Yeah. And everybody also said too, cut the steel. Yeah, I'm gonna cut hardened freaking steel with a knife that's just genius that we're, <laughs> I don't get these people you know like oh there's no steel belts in the side yeah you're right most of them are nylon so what you're not supposed to <laughs> I don't care what steel you have if you go and try to bash it through a a hardened steel bead or beads like this you're gonna get blade damage I don't, I don't care what super steel you use it's gonna happen but for shits and giggles Let's try to put it through the tread. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Yeah. That's knife right there. It'll do it. Let's take a look at that tip. A little fucked up, a little messed up. Hitting those steel beads, or the, the steel belting in here will destroy any, any edge. Let's take a look at that edge. Everybody says, oh, you went in there and dropped it. Oh, you went and cleaned it, blah, blah, blah. No, no, I didn't. Wind ain't helping me none. But even with that that minor tip damage, that's yeah, still. It still does a raggedy cut. Not bad. So the Ned Foss Brave in D2, what what are my opinions of it? I mean I, I would trust this tang way more than K-Bar's tang. I'm, I'm just, that's gonna hurt a lot of feelings, but this this true full tang with no milled out sections is gonna be 
uh, much, much stronger than a stick tang with some leather over it. It is what it is. So with the blade, same blade shape, if you like that style of knife and you like the ZT style of handle, this is a this is actually a pretty decent knife. After all that beating, nothing has come loose. There's no no rattle, no nothing. Um, D2 holds a fantastic edge. Even where I hit the steel beads, I wouldn't want to run my freaking finger across that hard because it will cut me deep. Um, Ned Foss Brave, uh, pretty pretty damn strong knife in my opinion. I do not think you would have any issue. Uh, <laughs> opening boxes or whatever else people do with knives <laughs> if you want to pretend to be a uh a backyard samurai or something like that i mean this one <laughs> this is the one for you it's uh i i like it honestly i really do i really i find i don't know people don't like the 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 style of this handle but i i find it actually comfortable i had no hot spots no uh no uh no vibrations no nothing when batoning uh the coating has held up well it's just dirty from that funky wood but uh yeah anyways i'm gonna put the link in the description uh if you're interested in it check it out it's a durable knife thanks for watching